Hello and welcome to the Administrator's Role in Developing and Administering the PR Plan. This slideshow will talk about your responsibility as an administrator and to develop and implement the PR Plan. Generally, the responsibility for this belongs to either a superintendent or sometimes a top-level administrator, such as a principal. The superintendent may choose to delegate this responsibility to an assistant or director of public relations, but he or she generally still oversees the implementation of the PR program. If you're a school principal, you may have an important role as well. For example, you'll be making sure that the internal relations at your school, for example, teacher and principal relations are healthy. You'll be making sure that the district school relations, for example, the relationship between the superintendent and yourself or the school board and yourself, that those relationships are healthy. And finally, between the school and the community, such as teacher-parent relationships. There are three options for organizing PR programs, and we're going to be talking about each of these options separately. PR programs may be organized in a centralized or a top-down approach. Generally, this takes place when a school superintendent um, develops a PR program and uh, decides to have all the schools in the district implement it with very little input. Decentralization, sometimes called the bottom-up approach, uh, consists of when decisions are made at the school level. And so each school develops a PR plan and they're fairly independent of each other. A hybrid, a hybrid plan takes both a top-down and a bottom-up approach. So usually the district level PR plan is developed first and some of the aspects of PR are centralized and some are not. The school level plans then extend that district plan. For example, a district plan might say um, who the point of contact for communications is for the district, and that might be true throughout the district. But then individually, each school might develop their own website, their own marketing strategies. And so some, are, uh, some decisions are centralized at the district level, some are more at the school level. Which approach is best? To consider which is best for your situation, you need to think about four different types of factors. And these are represented by the capital letters in the middle of each line. Efficiency, control, flexibility, and effectiveness. Efficiency refers to how quickly and well something can be done. So with a decentralized approach, efficiency might be low because many different schools are trying to do the same thing, whereas a centralized approach might be high because decisions are made rapidly and implemented rapidly if one central agency is in charge. A hybrid might fall somewhere in the middle. However, if you're looking for maximum control, then you definitely want to go with a centralized plan where a strict control is maintained over public relations. A decentralized plan will give you less control and a hybrid, again, somewhere in the middle. Flexibility refers to uh, how much you can step outside the plan when certain things need to be done or accomplished. In this case, if this is a priority, a decentralized plan will be more effective because it gives each school greater autonomy and a centralized plan will be less effective. Effectiveness, in other words, measuring outcomes, research has suggested that a combination of the two approaches or a hybrid, hybrid plan might be most effective. That is, a hybrid plan tends to give everyone a certain amount of freedom and at, at the same time allow them to achieve their own independent goals. So you need to consider 
Which of these variables is the most important in your situation? There's a definite connection between public relations and marketing. Because schools are not guaranteed a steady flow of students, marketing and PR must be treated as interrelated functions. And they require that you, first of all, have a very good vision of your school. You define your school. And usually this is defined in a school's mission statement or vision statement. So you should, you should really understand what your school or district's mission statement is. Who are you? Are you a STEM school? Uh, are you a special school for special education or some component of special education? You must also have interpreted the known needs and wants of your stakeholders, so your parents, and we've talked a little bit about how to gather that information, your parents, your teachers, your staff, your community members, and also monitor the environment to detect changing needs and wants. As part of the PR and marketing efforts, you need to communicate especially good information about programs in order to build goodwill. We looked at a number of PR plans already, and you might notice that they have several characteristics in common. The good ones are brief brevity, so you wouldn't want to wade through a plan that's 100 pages long. Compatibility, this means that they're compatible with your school's mission statement. Accountability, in this day and age, people are looking, stakeholders are looking for your efforts to be accountable to the general public. Measurability, this is part of accountability. You state outcomes that you hope to achieve and you state how you will measure them. Eventually, we will talk about evaluating plans, and measurability is an important component of that. Achievability, are your goals and objectives that you've set reasonable and achievable? And flexibility, situations come up all the time <clears throat> that require you to be a little flexible in implementing the plan, and does your plan allow for this type of flexibility? As an administrator, there are 10 steps that you can begin to develop and implement a public relations plan. First, you should establish a planning team, and we'll talk about the composition of that team in a minute. Define the publics being served. In other words, who are your internal and external stakeholders that you would like to reach with this plan? Define the district or school, and again, this is to looking at your mission statement, looking at your vision statement. Establishing benchmarks. So what are the outcomes that you hope to do in terms of, very, in terms of benchmarks? These are very broad, uh, broad objectives. Develop a mission statement. A PR mission statement can be different than the school's mission statement. So, for example, whereas your school's mission statement might focus on developing educational equity for all children, your PR state mission statement might be to um, utilize a variety of communication resources to develop two-way communication between your internal and external stakeholders. You should establish short-range goals and strategies, the things that will take one to two years. So, for example, does your, um, does, your, uh, does your school not have a PR plan? Well, then what are the steps that need to be taken to get it up and running in one to two years? And the tasks and deadlines for activities, so a calendar. When is each step going to be accomplished? You should have an overall clear sense of how to construct messages and themes for your PR plan. So if someone goes up to your planning team and asks this question, in a sentence or two, tell me about what your school is. That person should be able to answer that with a few sentences and say, my school is really renowned for, and whatever it is. Um, 
and this becomes one of your messages or themes. You constantly want to come back to those messages and themes in your PR efforts. So what is the message you want to get out on your website, on your newsletters, on your uh, open houses, during your open houses with parents, during your school luncheons where you invite community members in? What are the messages and themes that you touch over and over again? And there should only be a few of those. It consists of what defines you. Help the committee to decide how you will get the information out. Will it be publications, media outlets, or information services? And finally, the last step is to develop an evaluation plan so that your public relations plan can be um, assessed periodically. Each plan should be assessed probably at least every once every one to two years and modified as necessary if something isn't working. The planning team and then you need to let them do their work as an administrator. The planning team should be about seven to twelve members that come from your internal and external stakeholders. They should be of mixed status. What do I mean by this? I mean they should have different levels of power. So you might have a principal, an administrator, a teacher, a parent, uh, and you can see how this is a mixed levels of power status uh, hierarchy. They should be cohesive in that they should share common goals. So some real thought has to be given as to what you know about these individuals so that there will not be a, a discord if necessary. Diversity um, is becoming a huge issue. They should be representative of the community of stakeholders. So for example, if you, um, if you have a 10% Muslim population, perhaps you consider uh, representing that in your um, PR committee. The disposition attitudes um, should be cooperative and not aggressive, so you'll want to look for collaborative people who, whom you know have, have been involved in other efforts successfully. Perhaps they should meet in an informal physical environment. Certainly uh, it should not be as formal as, for example, a school board in which there's a head and uh, People are definitely on a dice, so you need to be aware of that. And you need to help them establish communications technology through email, wikis, Google Docs, any way that they can upload documents and communicate the work of the committee. So your interventions are to help the, establish the committee and to help guide it to help them understand their task by designating member roles, helping them to have a sense of ownership. One thing you don't want to do is step in every step of the way and tell them what to do because then they will just feel like it's a top-down approach and they won't have any sense of ownership. Help them to set reasonable, clear, measurable, and ex acceptable objectives. So. For example, in your review of the documents coming out of the committee, if you feel that um, something is inappropriate or unattainable uh, because you know of a logistical reason, you need to bring this to their attention. Help them and guide them by providing democratic and facilitative leadership. I like to refer to this as the guide on the side, not the sage on the stage. So you are a presence and you're guiding but at the same time, you're not taking over. And this will all be successful if you select capable team members. So as I've said before, it's important to give some thought to uh, who those people will be. This, uh, this lecture is finished, and um, please continue with the module.